Your Highness Tamim bin Ahmad Al Atani, Emir of the State of Qatar. Your Highness, we are extremely honored to have you as our special guest for the first time at our annual meeting in Davos. Since many years, um, we have a strong cooperation with your country. And uh, in 2010, I remember when we jointly hosted uh, the Global Redesign Summit in Doha to address the aftershocks of the financial 2007-2008 crisis. Under your leadership, Your Highness, both as a crown prince and now as the Emir of Qatar, your country has become a major, major force in global affairs. Small country, big influence. Today, Qatar has established a reputation as a real partner in international peace, diplomacy, and mediation. You have expanded Qatar's ties with your neighbors, including with Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Turkey. You have successfully mediated conflicts in Africa, in the Middle East, and Asia, contributing substantially to international stability and the resolutions of conflicts. The current war in Ukraine has further highlighted the importance of Qatar, with countries in Europe and elsewhere looking to your country to meet their energy needs. Soaring oil prices boosted Middle East oil producers, especially your country, and this at a time when Europe reduces energy imports. What has always impressed me is the forward orientation of your country, your policies, particularly also in the area of education, for example. You have now six of the best global universities in Doha, while Qatar University has established a reputation as a center of excellence. Finally, Your Highness, you played a major role in shaping Qatar's contributions to the world of sports. Qatar has started to play a leading role as a global sports destination, hosting the Grand Prix Qatar, and of course, we all are looking forward to the World Cup, FIFA World Cup Qatar 22. I will come back to this in the following session. Please join me all in welcoming His Highness Tamim bin Hamad. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, the current session of the World Economic Forum is of exceptional importance, for it is happening in the midst of economic challenges and geopolitical turmoil. Before we can hope for economic prosperity, we must first examine, repair, and enforce our framework for peace. And we need to send a reassuring message to people around the world only through unity we can overcome the conflict that divides us. I can tell you that after years of peace facilitation through mediation that we can never give up hope. We should never give up trying to bring parties together as long as we believe our efforts could save even a single life. Our attempts to mediate will be worth it. Our united efforts need to be based on principles already agreed on in the Charter of the United Nations International Law and respecting each other's sovereignty. In recent decades, 
we have witnessed the marginalization of the role of the United Nations, the transgression of the rule of law in international relations, and the breakdown of basic respect for one another's independence. Solving dispute through aggression is on the rise, and it has reached one of its worst peaks in the war here in Europe. We are in touch with all parties concerned in the Ukrainian crisis, and I am ready to contribute to every international and regional effort to find an immediate peaceful solution to the conflict between the Russian Federation and Ukraine. Qatar firmly rejects the aggression of the sovereignty of states and any act that would constitute a violation of international law. We stand in solidarity with the millions of innocent refugees who are victims of this European war and with the victims of all other wars taking place right now, victims of every race, nationality, and religion. I, I want us to help all of them. As we rightly apply laser focus to find a diplomatic solution to the Ukrainian crisis, I hope we can equally give as much attention and effort to resolving all those forgotten or ignored conflicts. They all deserve peace, security, and dignity. The most glaring example is in Palestine, which has been an open wound since the establishment of the United Nations. Those families have been occupied for decades with no relief in sight. The escalation in illegal settlement aggression has been relentless, and the same goes for the continual attacks against the Palestinian people. I keep praying that the world wakes up to the unjust and violence and finally acts. Shirin Abu Atle, Shirin, Ab Shirin Abu Atle, a Christian Palestinian American journalist, was killed two weeks ago in Palestine and then robbed of a dignified burial. Shirin was covering the suffering of the Palestinian people for decades, and our hearts are broken. Her death was just as horrific as the seven journalists killed in Ukraine since March of this year, and 18 other journalists killed in Palestine since 2000, and many other journalists killed in the line of duty in Iraq, Syria, and Yemen. In the 21st century, we should not tolerate these aggressions, and we should not accept a world where governments have double standards about the value of people based on their religion, region, or race. We consider the value of each European life to be just as precious as someone from our region. Distinguished audience, as a small state, Maintaining regional and international peace and security constitute a special priority for the state of Qatar. We work tirelessly to help manage, solve, mitigate conflicts, including our ongoing efforts in Afghanistan. We were honored to be able to help with the evacuation efforts in Afghanistan. And it was only possible thanks to the years spent investing in peacekeeping expert mediation, state-of-the-art military and special forces, search and rescue teams ranked as some of the best in the world, and the countless hours of sweat, tears from so many. All those years of investment, training, building strategic partnership paid off. At a time when we were needed to step in and rescue people, I'm so grateful for all your sacrifices. My friends, I also consider protecting the environment to be a responsibility for all of us. Qatar has placed sustainability front and center 
and focus our rescue resources to develop emission reduction technologies and cleaner energy. We intend to play an active role in encouraging regional and international policy development surrounding both energy and environment. We have all seen over the past months what happens when we, want, when we don't work together. At this critical moment in time, we must wisely balance the need to take care of the environment and simultaneously provide energy security for the world. This will take coordination and intense collaboration between all governments, companies, stakeholders, and every one of us. Because every single one of us needs energy. And right now, almost one, be one billion people are still without a reliable energy source. As one of the largest producers of liquefied natural gas in the world, Qatar invested in LNG expansion efforts for years, understanding that LNG is a critical base load energy source needed during the transition which is already taking place. Increased energy production can provide the world with a cleaner, safer, more reliable and flexible energy. Achieving global energy security will lead to market stability and reduce market stability and reduce the economic effects of the current energy crisis. Ladies and gentlemen, as most of you know, for the first time in the Middle East, Qatar will be hosting the FIFA World Cup the end of this year. We are working hard so this major sport event can allow our entire region the chance to host the world. For decades now, the Middle East has suffered from discrimination. And I have found out that such discrimination is largely based on people not knowing us and in some cases refusing to get to know us. Even today, there are still people who cannot accept the idea that an Arab Muslim country would host a tournament like the World Cup. These individuals, including many in positions of influence, have launched attacks at a pace never seen before when a mega sporting event was hosted by other countries on different continents. Despite the fact that each of those countries has its own particular problem and challenges, Qatar is just like your own country. Not perfect, constantly trying to improve and full of hope for a brighter future. We are so proud of the development reform and progress we have made, and we are grateful for the spotlight that the World Cup provided, which inspired us to make these changes at a lightning speed. I assure everyone listening that this edition of the World Cup will be a special one. We believe that sport is a tool for positive change, promote tolerance and respect, empowers youth and inspire unity. We stand by that belief. And I hope you will join us to discover the beautiful game as it is played in our country. Ladies and gentlemen, our common interest, our common responsibility, and the common destiny of all humanity required partnership so we can all live together in peace. I thank you very much. Your Highness, thank you very much for sharing with us your principal ideas. I would like to follow up with some questions. Um, uh, you recently were hosted by President Biden at the White House in January 22. And during the visit, um, President Biden designated Qatar as a major non-NATO ally. Uh, some weeks later, I think you were in China, you visited uh, President Xi, and you also discussed uh, the Belt and Road Initiative. 
So my question would be, how do you balance your relationship in this conflictual world, particularly between the US on the one side and China on the other side? Well, the US is, um, um, we have a great relationship with the US. US is a very strategic partnership. And this designation um, is a recognition for the role of Qatar in the Middle East and all around uh, the world. And um, after that, as you mentioned, uh, Professor, yes, I am an uh, IOC member of International Committee, uh, Olympic International Committee. And I had the chance to visit uh, Beijing for the opening ceremony of the Winter Olympic Games. And I had the chance to visit uh, President Xi and have a meeting with him. Um, this recognition uh, of, of Qatar is because of the role, as I said, that we've been doing in the last uh, couple of uh, years in peace, peace uh, facilitation, humanitarian aid, and also we work very closely with our allies in America and Europe as well to counter terrorism. We have this uh, great understanding and uh, as I said, uh, we are uh, doing a lot in peaceful uh, facilitation. And one uh, important role that we're doing as well, humanitarian aid, uh, we, uh, we are very proud and happy that we are uh, helping to educate uh, more than 12 million people around the world. This is very important. And also in our region, we are helping to create uh, jobs by uh, helping the youth to create their own business. We, um, as I said, we work very closely together with our allies to counter uh, terrorism. Also, our duty, we are blessed with the resources. We need to also work in parallel to uh, give the youth in our region hope by good education and uh, create uh, jobs, because this is very important to prevent um, uh, terror, prevent any, uh, let's say, extremism or terrorism. Um, China. We have a very good relationship with China. We have a very strong economic relationship with China. And uh, we, uh, we supply uh, China with uh, gas. Also, how we see the world is, um, we don't want to see the world as uh, polarized between two big uh, superpowers. This is not the interest of, uh, of all of us, including many countries in the West as well. Being um, a peace uh, facilitator uh, for many uh, decades, we believe the only way to solve all those uh, conflicts is through uh, dialogue. We understand there are conflicts and there are differences, but we should never give up hope, and I think the only way is for them to sit together and uh, try and solve all those uh, disputes. Your Highness, I will come back to this question uh, later. But um, I would like to take up what you said uh, about Qatar as a major, I think, second largest uh, exporter of gas. Uh, uh, just to take the figure, 77 million uh, metric uh, tons per year. Now, um, you have received quite a number of, uh, you, you are helping the world to uh, in its energy transformation and uh, reaching energy um, independence. You have, with, uh, you have uh, received uh, particularly visitors from Europe. And my, my question would be, uh, to what extent actually uh, do you feel that the gas, um, uh, the gas created by your country can fill the gap which is arising in Europe? Yeah, that's the topic now that everyone is speaking about. We have to understand that this energy crisis wasn't due to the war in Europe. It was way before that. But of course, the war in Europe maybe made it more difficult. We took the risk years ago to invest in the LNG expansion, understanding that this LNG is needed for the transition uh, period. We, uh, we are exploring uh, markets. We understand that there's a need and demand uh, for gas. Qatar is a reliable uh, partner. We work, uh, you know, we, we make sure as well that we do a lot in energy and we do also a lot in, uh, in environment, which is very important, very important in our vision. 
So, uh, yeah, I mean, with all those expansion, we make sure that we have the state-of-the-art technology to make sure that, you know, uh, this uh, progress in LNG will also reduce any uh, issues concerning the environment. The technologies actually, um, I mean, are very, very fascinating and interesting the way how things happen. I mean, it's a very technical uh, issue. As much as our Minister of Energy tries to explain to me, it's just so complicated. But it's very, it's, it's very interesting how now the flame reduction is working now. We've been uh, spending, uh, spending a lot of investment in that. It's just how, you know, the flame, instead of the of uh, going out, we try, we try to reduce the flame, reduce the pressure. Because of the pressure, you know, you need to reduce the flame. So we are we having technologies in reducing the flame, even with the, uh, the new technologies on the ships as well that we have, the, the new ships. Instead of going out with the flame, we make sure that the gas comes back uh, in, the, in the ship and also helps uh, fuel the uh, energy for the for the uh, for the ships so all those are uh, you know new technologies and you know as much as we do with the gas expansion we make sure that it's sustainable and we protect the environment and your important role your highness in the creation of hydrogen which is a major subject of discussion also during this meeting yes it is I know that your highness um, you referred to the mediation role you, you have uh, taken on and uh, I, I mean uh, to my mind comes particularly also how you facilitated the task, the, the talks between the US and the Taliban. Uh, you mentioned yourself uh, some of your engagements. Uh, you, you just visited last uh, week, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Iran and uh, you are acting as an important intermediary uh, between actually the parties um, to revive the 2015 um, nuclear accord. Um, could you say some words about it and could you also say if you look at the global landscape and where mediation is needed, what could be your priorities at this moment? Yeah, as I mentioned, our geostrategic uh, role in our region is to, uh, for peace facilitation and also to supply an energy security as well. So we've been playing this role for decades now. And uh, we understood that the best way and the only way to, um, to solve dispute and conflict is through sitting on a table and negotiation. Um, you mentioned about uh, Afghanistan. Yes, we've been working closely with our allies in, you know, negotiation in Afghanistan, and it paid off. It paid off. Well, we're still very far away. We still have issues and problems. We understand. But maintaining this dialogue is very, very important. Iran, as I said, we're not playing an official role to mediate between the West and Iran. But Iran is our next-door neighbor. We have a good understanding and a good relationship with Iran. And our role as well is to try to help and to encourage all parties to come back uh, to this uh, agreement. So that was, you know, my message to our Iranians that, you know, uh, we encourage them to come back to this, uh, to this agreement. Your Highness, um, we need so much bridge building in the world that also the World Economic Forum is uh, trying to be a bridge, a bridge builder in our conflictual world. Now, can you share with me the secret to be uh, successful in bridge building? Well, there's no secret and there's no like magic, but um, we're grateful that people, when they come and ask us, they trust us. We have a track record of being honest and bringing people together. And this is our, uh, our role. We should never give up. Believe me, we, uh, many negotiations were so, so difficult. And at some point, you know, you feel that we're not going to go, you know, uh, forward. But we should never give up. We are a small country and we play, a, you know, we play this role and we continue playing this role. And as I said, we, any contribution for peace and stability in the region and any part of the world, we will not hesitate when we're asked to do so. So it means um, trust. Openness, 
That's it. Yeah, and, trust and persistence. Persistent. Never, never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Sometimes it's very difficult. You just <laughs> want to run away from it. But no, you should never give up. Keep on going. Keep on going because this line of communication is very important. To conclude our session, uh, Your Highness, on behalf of all the participants, I want to thank you and I want to wish you to continue with your important task. I wish you courage, persistence and success. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much.